No. Is it Monday? No. Is it Tuesday? Tuesday? Better or Tuesday? No, 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 no. Is it Wednesday? No. Is it Thursday? Shut up. Is it Friday? Saturday? Better or Thursday? Maybe it's tomorrow and maybe it's not. Maybe it's yesterday. I just forgot. I wonder if he'll tell me that on my cameo that I sent to him. Welcome to Universal Remote. Thank you very much for coming out and, uh, well, staying home, I should say. The online quiz show at production value equal to or greater than two-thirds of current network television. Live and direct from Network 23 alongside my two fuzzy compatriots. My name is Devin Pike. Of course, we've got Woody and Leslie on scoring and Pigman on motivation. Thank you very much for joining our twice-weekly trivial diversion. Before we get started, I do need to make a correction from Monday night's game. Now, several of you messaged me to point out, very politely, that one of the Rule 34 answers on Golden Blonde was listed as a fake porn film. We looked back at the scoring, and um, we found out that, yes, on Golden Blonde was a legit porn film. Congratulations to all uh, six of you who messaged in and said, I remember that movie. I own that movie. I'm watching that movie right now. Great. Um, we looked back at the scoring. The results remained the same for anyone who answered that instead of Raiders of the Lost Arse. So Pigman apologizes for the error and immediately went looking for the film himself. Now, to the rules. It is incredibly simple to play. All you have to do is to log into your YouTube or Twitch account, then play along by putting your answers in the chat window. So that's over to the right. If you're on your desktop, it's below. If you're on your mobile device, and if you swipe in a certain direction, um, I think that Pigman winds up uh, as your date for the evening. So, uh, the first three people who answer each question correctly get the points. In the first half, that means 30, 20, or 10 points for first, second, or third. And those values double in the second round. So, pot's right. We're locked in. This is a special theme night. We are celebrating the return of the last drive-in on Shudder with my former boss, Joe Bob Briggs. So all of our channels are either horror-themed or horror-adjacent. So look, if you're not a hardcore horror fan, that doesn't mean that you're SOL for the game because, as you know, not all the categories are direct down the line on that. Okay? Everybody fine? Everybody ready? All right, let's get things kicked off with our first category of the evening. That, of course, is monster. No, nope. is there? Yes, it is a monster vision. You're not going to tell me, are you? Oh, good God. I love it when a plan comes together. Why are you not showing? Now my stuff is being recalcitrant. Oh, it is there. It is showing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, technology. Monster Vision. TV and horror go together like Friday Nights on Shudder and Lone Star Beer. Journey back with us to the days when a 17-inch television was our gateway to the frightful. Here we go with question number one. Karen Black faces off against a nasty Zuni doll in the final segment of what 1975 horror TV classic? Once again, Karen Black faces off against a nasty Zuni doll in which TV horror classic? Okay. All right. 
Moving on to question number two. Guillermo del Toro remade this 1973 gem in 2010, so I suppose the little goblins living in the vents of your home just wasn't as scary in the modern era as it was to me when I was four years old. And our third and final question in Monster Vision. Toby Hooper directed this 1973 Stephen King, I'm sorry, this Stephen King miniseries in 1979 after the film screenplays wound up being, in King's words, a complete mess. Once again, Toby Hooper directed this Stephen King miniseries in 1979 after the film's screenplays wound up being, in Stephen King's words, a complete mess. All right, that's going to do it for Monster Vision. Let's move on to our second category of the evening. Toys are bad. Gone, but not forgotten. Look, I was a Toys R Us kid. Now as a TRU adult, I revisit my stores, and it's just some old guy named Ollie or a liquor store, and I don't get nearly the selection that I used to. Answer these following questions about evil toys in movies. Question number one. In the Child's Play series, what brand of doll was Chucky? Once again, in the Child's Play series, what brand of doll is Chucky? And we're not talking about the reboot, we're talking about the original movies. Okay. Question number two. Puppet Master The Littlest Reich stars this Reno 911 and the State alum, where I just know him as Batman's doctor. Once again, Puppet Master The Littlest Reich Stars this Reno 911 and the State alum, whereas I pretty much just know him as Batman's doctor. And third and final question in Toys Are Bad. The Twilight Zone has one of the best evil dolls in Talking Tina. Which actor held the doll as it said, My name is Talking Tina and I'm gonna kill you! Once again, the Twilight Zone had one of the best evil talking dolls in Talky Tina, which actor held the doll and said, My name is Talky Tina and I'm gonna kill you! I like that, it's fun. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Let's move on to the third category for the first round. That is the Final Girl Network, which... Sorry. Um, they are an amazing trope in horror films. The final girl is the most badass chick. She may not start out the film in exactly that way, but by the end of it, she's covered in blood, holding a machete, and saying to the world, you are not going to kill me. I think we need that kind of energy right now. So here we go with Final Girl Network. Question number one. Which final girl seems extremely timely right now by saying in the mo in the first movie she appears in if we break quarantine we could all die and once again which final girl seems extremely timely right now with the phrase if we break quarantine we could all die Question number two. Which Scott Glosserman 2006 mockumentary perfectly explores the final girl theory with a look at homicidal maniac Leslie Vernon? Once again, which Scott Glosserman 2006 mockumentary perfectly explores the final girl theory with a look at homicidal maniac Leslie Vernon? And the third and final question in the channel. Joss Whedon's fingerprints were all over the cabin in the woods, the send-up of the final girl theory, but he was not the director. Who was? 
Once again, Joss Whedon's fingerprints were all over Cabin in the Woods, a send-up of the Final Girl Theory, but Joss was not the director of the film. I want to know who was. You're scratching your heads on it. I can feel it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little more time on this. Do, 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 do. All right, that is going to wrap it up for the first round of questions, which brings us to, of course, snack time. Um, I don't have anything to promote this time around. Uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, I know wherever you are in the various uh, places in the uh, United States, I don't think anybody's playing out of the country yet. No one's uh, sent me any notes saying that we're going to do it that way. Um, but... I'm. I don't keep me keep me to beat a dead horse with this, but um, as somebody who's in the middle of cancer treatment right now, and somebody who is insanely immunocompromised, if you can stay home, please do it. If you're able to, um, if you're able to do whatever business you can at home, just do it for at least a couple more weeks. Just give it some more time. I know it sucks being in the house all day. Trust me, I know, I get it. The only place I've been lately has been the hospital or here. So it is, it, it's imperative that we be smart about this stuff. And again, listen to Ellen Ripley. Yeah, I just gave away one of the answers. If we, all, if we break quarantine, we could all die. I prefer to not die right now. I'm rather happy with my life. So just be safe. Be kind, be incredibly kind to all the businesses that are open and serving you guys, whether it's leaving, uh, you know, like a, a, a Pop-Tart or something out for a delivery guy who's bringing you something or whatever, you know, just be kind. That's all. That's all I care about. All right. Um, Let's take a look at our answers from round one, then we'll take a look at the scores for Monster Vision, the Karen Black 1975 horror classic. It was a trilogy. It was three different films. Trilogy of Terror. Uh, Guillermo del Toro remade Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, which is the little critters in the vents around your house, and I swore I didn't look in a vent for five or six years after that. And really shouldn't have afterwards because the dust goblins are horrible. Uh, Toby Hooper directed the 1979 miniseries adaptation of Salem's Lot. So for Toys Are Bad, the Child's Play series focused around the good guy doll named Chucky. Um, I don't think that it was named a good guy doll in the remake where Mark Hamill voiced it. But the good guy doll um, voiced by... Uh, Brad DeReef. Now, that was a good guy doll. Um, Puppet Master, The Littlest Reich. Uh, Tom Lennon was the star of that, and I didn't look to see if any of you put um, Greg Sestero in that line because he was in Retro Puppet Master. Yeah, I, I, I said it. Um, uh, my, the uh, Twilight Zone with Talkie Tina starred uh, Who Loves You Baby, Lollipop, or Pre-Lollipop, Kojak, Telly Savalas. For the Final Girl Network, I already said that Ellen Ripley was the final girl who said if we break quarantine, we could all die. Behind the Mask was uh, the story of Leslie Vernon, and Drew Goddard was the person who actually directed uh, Cabin in the Woods, and I still think Joss, I know Joss did um, B unit direction, and I'm sure he his hands were all in that script at that point. So, let's take a look at the scores. Over on Twitch, we have Rob, who has migrated over to uh, YouTube, is in third, Lisa is in second, and Jaster much to my chagrin, is in first. Over on YouTube, we've got Sasha Dahl in third, Zach in second, and Ken Goach leading the way at the halfway mark off YouTube. But guess what, kids? Don't mean nothing. The early points don't mean nothing because we take them all and we double those scores all the way to the end of the show. It is round number two, and we're going to start round two with... The Tom Atkins Network. Tom is the fucking man. Women want him. Men want to be him. So let's celebrate some of the greatest moments of Tom Atkins' career. All right, let's do this with question number one. In Night of the Creeps, Tom plays Detective Ray Cameron, who has what incredible catchphrase? 
Once again, uh, in Night of the Creeps, Tom Atkins plays Detective Ray Cameron, who has what incredible catchphrase. All right, question number two. The criminally underappreciated Halloween 3 season of the witch closes with Tom yelling into a telephone. What precisely is our hero screaming? Once again, in Halloween 3 season of the witch, the movie ends with Tom yelling into a telephone. What is he screaming? Okay, and our third and final question in the Tom Atkins Network. In the movie The Fog, Tom just can't kick the supernatural specter's asses. All he can do is to save hot women in Antonio Bay. What is Stevie Wayne warning us from? What is in the fog? Once again, Tom just cannot kick some supernatural specter ass in the fog. All he can do is just save all the hot women in Antonio Bay. What is Stevie Wayne warning us from? What is in the fog? All right. That's going to wrap it up for the Tom Atkins Network. Let us move along to... The Drive-In Will Never Die. With eternal vigilance, this is absolutely accurate. Not only is the Drive-In Theater the site of the conception of many people in our audience right now, but it's also one of the most responsible ways to watch movies in this socially distant era. Let us look on to the legacy of this most wondrous theatrical venue. Here we go. Question number one. As I hit that bed one more time. What state housed the first reported full-time drive-in theater? Once again, which state housed the very first reported full-time drive-in theater? Okay. Question number two. Which Mel Brooks film held its world premiere at the Pickwick Drive-In in Burbank, California? Once again, which Mel Brooks film held its world premiere at the Pickwick Drive-In in sunny Burbank, California? <coughs> and the third and final question for this round why is daylight savings time the bane of drive-in theater owners everywhere? Again, why is daylight savings time the bane of drive-in theater owners everywhere? All right, that's going to wrap it up for the drive-in will never die. Let's move on to our final channel of the evening. Four stars, Joe Bob says, check it out. Man, I love this thing. I was late to the party to get one of these. This was a limited edition uh, figure that Fright Rags, who does a lot of tie-in stuff with Shudder and Joe Bob and all the clap and Fangoria. Um, so they did a limited run of these in action figures. And I love the fact that he's got a beer bottle with him. And I'm sure they probably lobbied to get a Lone Star um, label on it. So, nope, didn't get it. So, uh, four stars, Joe Bob says, check it out. In the history of Joe Bob's uh, uh, newspaper column syndicated around the world or on Monster Vision on TNT or on The Last Drive-In, only a few times has Joe Bob issued a full four-star rating or a four-star uh, rating to any film. So, these are some of those films. First question. Uh, where the hell am I? I am here, you are here, we are here, and we are all together. The drive-in totals for this 1979 Walter Hill classic include one riot, exploding car, spray paint to the face, and gangs that wear kimonos. Once again, the drive-in totals for this 1979 Walter Hill classic include one riot, exploding car, spray paint to the face, and gangs that wear kimonos. 
right, question two. Dan O'Bannon wrote and directed this 1985 film that Joe Bob says deserves serious consideration as one of the finest zombie exploding head comedies of all time. Once again, Joe Bob says this Dan O'Bannon 1985 film deserves serious consideration as one of the finest zombie exploding head comedies of all time. And the third and final question of the evening. Joe Bob said that this plot of the 1987 vampire flick might as well have been How Far Would You Go to Sleep with Jamie Gertz? Joe Bob says that the plot of this 1987 vampire flick just might as well have been How Far Would You Go to Sleep with Jamie Gertz? All right, kids, uh, Lad is going to wrap it up for the regular channels of Universal Remote tonight. We're going to take a little moment to tally the scores, and in the meantime, I want to thank every single person for, once again, kicking in, watching the show, playing on YouTube, playing on Twitch, spreading the word about the show if you have not already done so. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your strangers that are across the way from you who peek out the window at you every now and then because you're busting quarantine by looking at them. You're not really busting quarantine. It's looks are still free. It's not going to be a problem. Um, I will say this as we're as we're tallying scores. Um, if you've not already done so, um, there is a, a batch of new entertainment that came off the BBC today. It's called Big Night In, and they were raising money for frontline uh, defenders in uh, the UK. And one of my favorite sketches from Red Nose Day, and um, they revived it here was David Tennant and Catherine Tate as the uh, teacher and student and I'm telling you it is amazing and I linked to it earlier on uh, Facebook if you've not already checked it out please do so because you will laugh your head off at it it is absolutely fantastic all right so for our twitch users uh, let's see doubt furious came in fourth Lisa came in third Rob came in second and Roy Buckingham came in first, so hang on, Roy. Over on YouTube, Sasha Dahl came in fifth. Les Lisa Ledbetter came in fourth. Shannon Hatcher came in third. You did move back up a second, hat, Shannon, so you're not drifting off of the scoreboard that easily. Zach Schroeder, our uh, winner last week, came in second. And Ken Goach was the leader on YouTube. Now that means that it is time for the final round. It is time for ultimate domination. So, Roy and Ken, you are the only two people who are allowed to answer this question. You're going to have 30 seconds to do so. Um, so everybody, stay, steer clear of the chat for a minute. I'm going to put this into the chat. All right. Uh, let's see. So, Leslie, I'm going to need you to read Roy's answers, and Woody, I'm going to need you to read Ken's because they're going to have 30 seconds to answer the following. There are so many ways that Jason Voorhees has dispatched horny camp counselors and banana eating hitchhikers. In 30 seconds, name as many as you can. Go. And I'm starting the clock right now. Yeah. I'll give you a little uh, hold music while that is running on. I do want to thank um, everybody who helps put the show together um, over the course of the weekend, whether it's um, helping out with questions, uh, ideas for things, uh, filming the the great Pigman segments. Um, it's it's really really great. Um, so they're tied at four each. You have 10 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And time, stop. So let's see, we have seven, and we have seven. No, we have eight. All right. So, uh, let's see. Ken had machete, stabbed through bed, shower door glass, pitchfork, spear gun, fence rail, and crossbow. Roy had sleeping bag, 
killed a pregnant woman, head squish, harpoon, smash face in the mirror, punch head off, pitchfork to gut, and throat slice. Now, <laughs> um, I have to subtract one from each of you guys because, uh, well, hang on, let me see. Shower door glass. Shower door glass did, oh yeah, it actually did. No, that's actually right. Now let's see. Uh, killed, killed a pregnant woman does not count. That is not a way that Jason killed. It's just a person that Jason killed. So give me one more each. Give me one more each, you guys, right now. One more. <laughs> it does sound like Pigman's to-do list. That's exactly right. <laughs> He gets it in first. And Roy in with Drowned in a Barrel. So, no, wait, hang on. Stabbed with Shovel. I am going to give that one to Ken, mostly because drowning him in a barrel is not a, is not a murder weapon, it is a method of killing. So, no, wait, hang on. Oh, I gotta figure, no, you guys, you guys tied it. Crap, I've gotta figure out a good way to do this. Um, all right. Oh, I hate doing this. I, uh, I know I asked for methods. Okay. Yeah, Woody, I know. I got to go to the fucking tiebreaker. I just have to write another one. All right. Ken, Roy, closest to the pin wins, not including short treks or films, how many episodes exist of Star Trek and its various spin-offs? Once again, not including short treks or films, how many episodes exist of Star Trek and its various spin-offs? All right. Ken has his number in. Roy, here's your turn. Okay, uh, Ken guessed 134, Roy guessed 450. You're both way off, however, I did say closest to the pin across all of the series. So that's Star Trek, the animated series, The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and Discovery. 791 episodes all across that. So that means, unfortunately, the smartest person on the internet up until Monday is, of course, Roy Buckingham. Congratulations, Roy. Thank you very much for playing. And, of course, thank you for watching Universal Remote on a Thursday night. Thank you for playing along. It is a... Oh, yeah, Star Trek Picard. Yeah, that, it did count Picard. Yes, you're exactly right, Ken. Thank you. It's been too soon. Um, that's going to wrap it up for a Thursday night here. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, uh, beginning at 9 p.m., over on Shudder, and if you don't have Shudder, there is a trial available for it. It is the last drive-in. It is a double feature every single Friday night and the perfect way for you to get your quarantine on. Until next time, it is Monday, 9 p.m. Central, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. My name is Devin Pike. Thank you very much for watching Universal Remote. Tell your friends. We'll see you guys again soon. Have a great night. Be safe, everybody.